So let's talk about moray eels today, shall we? So moray eels at first glance might initially remind you of a snake or a worm, but they're not. They're a fish. What? It's not a picture of a moray eel. What? Yes, it is. No, no, it's not. It's an alien. It's a what? It's the alien from the alien movie. That's literally the title of the film. Wait, you mean the xenomorph? Yes. What are you talking about? This picture is clearly not a... Uh... Uh, oh, oh no, oh, it's totally a xenomorph. Sorry, that was, I don't know what that was. Uh, anyways, as I was saying, moray eels are long limbless animals that may look like a snake or a worm, but they're not, they're a fish. They're part of the family Murinidae, which is also part of the order Anguliformes, which are also known as the true eels, which, I mean, I think that's kind of an elitist term because like what does that make eel-like fish that aren't part of this order like these guys? What are they? False eels? Sham? Eels? Counterfeit? Eels? Anyway, the order of Anguliformes is part of the infraclass Teleosteae, which contain 96% of all fish on the planet, making moray eels very much a fish. The oldest fossils we have from moray eels date to somewhere between 34 and 54 million years ago, which means for context that they're younger than sea stars, but that's all the context y'all are gonna get about that. Moray eels are found all over the world. Most are found in warm shallow salt water, some are found in cold shallow salt water. There are a few that hang out in fresh water and a few that are found in deeper parts of the ocean. And a pretty noticeable characteristic between all of these species is that none of these animals have any appendages to speak of, which is a good thing here. Moray eels like to hide and this body shape makes it easy for them to hide in between rocks or corals or sand, and as an added bonus, it also allows them to tie their body into literal knots. And there seems to be two reasons as to why they do this. One, it allows the moray eel to tear apart food that's too large for them to eat. And two, they appear to use this knot kind of like a weapon. This behavior was discovered by Dr. Shanta Barley and her team when they went out onto a coral reef and stuck a mesh bag full of fish out there and watched to see what happened. Eventually, a moray eel showed up, and after attempting to tear open the bag with its mouth, it did this. Presumably to try and get the bag open. Didn't work though. But you know, points for trying, I guess. So that knot tying business is all pretty bananas, but that isn't what makes moray eels alien enough to be on this YouTube channel. So moray eels are carnivorous predators, which means they... Uh, I'm sorry everyone, hold on. Just one second, I need to check something really quickly. Oh god damn. Anyway, moray eels are carnivorous predators, which means they need to eat other living animals in order to survive. Their diet is primarily made up of other fish, crustaceans, and um uh shield your eyes, little YouTube avatar. Octopuses, they really, really like to eat octopuses. Which is like, you know, that's normal stuff for an ocean predator to eat, nothing really interesting there. But one thing that is interesting about moray eels and their prey is that moray eels consistently eat prey that's like way bigger than their mouth. You can basically look at any fish and figure out by the size of its mouth what size of food they eat. So fish with small mouths like this chromus eat small prey like mysotrimp, and fish with big mouths like this goliath grouper eats big prey like juvenile barracuda and juvenile sea turtles and juvenile sharks. But moray eels have a relatively small mouth compared to the size of the prey that they usually eat. And, you know, you don't see a lot of fish that do that. So a good follow-up question to ask would be, how do moray eels do it? Well, they do it through the use of their raptorial pharyngeal jaws, which are a second set of jaws that the moray eel stores in the back of its throat, so when prey ends up inside its mouth, its second set of jaws lunges out of the throat, into the mouth, grabs onto the prey, and then drags it back into the throat. And doesn't that sound familiar? And if you're wondering what they look like, I got some footage here of a moray eel about to eat something. And I literally spent hours and hours trying to find this footage, so y'all better appreciate it. Oh, come on. Seriously? What the fu- Okay, this is it, for real. For real this time. Here is the real footage of a moray eel about to eat something. And you can see the jaws for a hot second right there. 
boom, and down the hatch. So yeah, not a lot of animals can do this. Shout out to Professor Rita Maida. She was the first person to actually record a moray eel's raptorial pharyngeal jaws in action back in 2007. Personal side note, I used to feed a moray eel on a regular basis, and every time I would feed him, I would always try to catch a glimpse of his second set of jaws, but never was successful. And I found out that's because in order to get the footage, Professor Maida had to use a high-speed camera going at about 100 frames a second. So yeah. That's why I could never see them. So when I tell people about a moray eel's raptorial pharyngeal jaws, a pretty common question I get is, why? Why, why, why? Dear God, why? Why is there an animal like the xenomorph from the alien film franchise? Why does that exist on our planet? Now, before we all start grabbing flamethrowers and trying to chase moray eels into the cold vacuum of space, I do want to say that moray eels aren't anywhere near as dangerous as xenomorphs. First off, the raptorial pharyngeal jaws of the moray eel don't come all the way out of the mouth. And second off, moray eels are fairly harmless animals. They can't see very well, they don't like coming out of their hidey holes, and they're a little bit dumb. That said, every once in a while I see a video like this go viral, where a scuba diver befriends a moray eel out in the wild, and I'm just like... <sighs> Don't do that. I'm not saying that moray eels are inherently more dangerous than any other animal, but moray eels are still wild animals. And in general, you don't want to mess with wild animals, right? They're unpredictable, which means they might unintentionally hurt you. There's a video out there that I've unfortunately seen of a scuba diver getting its finger bitten off by a moray eel. And I'm pretty sure the moray eel didn't mean it, but it still happened. Anyway, moral of the story, moray eels are really just fine with being left alone, so just leave them alone. So back to this question, we actually have to answer another question first, which is how do other fish get food inside their mouth? Smarter Every Day made a really great video about this, link in the description if you want to watch it in its entirety and also up here in the corner somewhere. But other fish eat by creating a very powerful suction using their mouth. And the only way they can do that is by opening their mouth really, really wide and really, really quickly, which causes all the water in front of the fish's mouth to rush in and usually takes the prey along with it. The thing is, moray eels like to hide and hunt in holes that are not much bigger than the size of their own head. So like, look at this, look at how wide this bass has to get its mouth open so that it can eat something that really isn't that big. More eels don't have the space for this, not in the nooks and crannies they're shoving their craniums into on a regular basis. So looking at the footage from earlier, we can see that compared to the bass, the moray eel doesn't need to open its mouth much wider than the food it's eating. If moray eels had to eat the same way that other predator fish do, they'd have to stop hunting in small, hard to reach areas and go hunting out in the open ocean, where there are a lot more predators they'd have to compete with. But thanks to their raptorial pharyngeal jaws, the moray eel can just nope out of all that. Instead, all they need to do is shove their head down a hole and hey presto, it's lunchtime. Okay, so I was talking to my, I guess I'm gonna call him my creative consultant. I don't really know what else to call him. And he was telling me that I shouldn't leave a note like this at the end of my video because it will date it. And while I don't disagree with him, here I am leaving a note at the end of my video that is totally going to date it. But I feel like I need to acknowledge the fact that it took over two years for me to make my second YouTube video. I won't bore you all with the details of why, but long story short, 2019 wasn't really a good year for me, and it was really hard for me to do anything meaningful and creative. But then there were some big life changes that happened to me at the beginning of 2020, and everything was supposed to get better. And then it didn't. But finally, with the help of some really great people in my life, I was able to finish making this video. So I wanted to take a moment to apologize for taking so long to make it and to let y'all know that I am going to do better. I am going to release my next video in less than two years. That's a promise. I also forgot to mention in my first video that I have a Twitter account, twitter.com slash the octopus lady. I'm not on there a ton, but when I am, I'm mostly just retweeting cool marine biology related stuff. So feel free to follow me on there. And then finally, if you're still watching this, uh, Thank you, especially if you're one of the OG subscribers. It really does mean a lot that you're still here. <laughs> and if you're not an OG subscriber and you're new here, stick around. I will hopefully be releasing more fun and interesting videos soon. And speaking of, tune in next time. We'll be talking about horseshoe crabs. And until then, this has been your friendly neighborhood octopus lady reminding you that you don't need to go into space to find aliens. Jaws open wide and there's more jaws inside that samore. When your prey starts to fight, so you take an inside bite that samore. When they knock out your teeth, but you have another set underneath that. And when you
your species is dumb that you'll just bite off the thumb that's a 